Hi everyone, welcome to this GCSE Foundation Revision video. The 68 days of going to a GCSE Maths exam and today we're going to focus on the topic of laws of indices. Now I've looked at indices previously but today we're going to focus on the laws of indices. So if you go to the Court Maths Revision card, card number 64 would be quite useful. It's the revision card on laws of indices and it's got some of the key information there for you. Um, and remember it's also got the videos and practice questions and so on on the back that'll be useful as well. But in this video I'm going to go through the laws of indices, what they are, how to answer some questions on it and then some questions for you to try yourself. Remember to pause the video and to give those a shot. So let's get started. Hi, today we're going to be looking at laws of indices. So let's have a look at our first law. So if we're multiplying things with the same base, we can add the powers. So for instance, if we had m cubed multiplied by m to the power of 4, we could add the powers 3 plus 4 is equal to 7, so that would be m to the power of 7. And let's check and see why. Because if we had m cubed, that's m multiplied by m multiplied by m, and then we've got m to the power of 4, that's m multiplied by m multiplied by m multiplied by m, where if we're multiplying them together, we've got m times m times m times m times m times m times m, so that'll be m to the power of 7. So if you're multiplying things with the same base, so in this case we've got m and m, and if we're multiplying things with the same base we can just add the powers. So let's have a look at these questions, so feel free to press pause and to work out what the missing powers would be for each of these. Okay, so our first one, we've got y to the power of 8 multiplied by y to the power of 3, well we can add the powers, 8 plus 3 is 11, so the answer would be y to the power of 11. Okay, let's have a look at our next one. We've got 5 to the power of 3 multiplied by 5 to the power of 4. Well, we've got the same base. They're both 5 to the power of something. We're multiplying, so we're going to add the powers. 3 plus 4 is equal to 7, so that'll be 5 to the power of 7. And that's it. Okay, let's have a look at our next one. This time we've got y to the power of negative 5 multiplied by y to the power of 3. Again, we can add the powers. Negative 5 plus 3 would be negative 2 because you go back up 3, so it'd be negative 4, negative 3, negative 2. So it'd be y to the power of negative 2. And that's it. So if you're multiplying things with the same base, you can add the powers and if you got y to the power of 11, 5 to the power of 7 and y to the power of negative 2, well done. Okay, let's have a look at our next law. Okay, so our next law is if we're dividing things with the same base, we can take away the powers. So if we had m to the power of 8 divided by m squared, we can do 8 take away 2 and that's equal to 6. So the answer would be m to the power of 6. And again, let's just check that. If we had m multiplied by 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 m, so m to the power of 8, and you divide that by m squared, well that m would cancel with that m. That m would cancel with that m, you'd be left with 6 m's multiplied together, so it'd be m to the power of 6. So if you're dividing things with the same base, you can subtract the powers. So here's three questions for you to try, so press pause and try these questions now. Okay, the first one, we had y to the power of 15 divided by y to the power of 5. We're dividing things with the same base, so we can take away the powers. 15 take away 5 is 10, so it'll be y to the power of 10. And if you got that, well done. Okay, next, so instead of writing the divide symbol, sometimes we write over, like so. So this means c to the power of 12 divided by c to the power of 4. Again, we take away the powers. 12 take away 4 would be 8. So it would be c to the power of 8. And finally, we had y to the power of 8 divided by y to the power of negative 4. So we're going to take away the powers. So we're going to do 8 subtract minus 4. And 8 subtract minus 4, well, subtracting a negative would be the same as adding it. 8 plus 4 would be 12. So the answer would be y to the power of 12. And that's it. So if you got y to the power of 10, c to the power of 8, and y to the power of 12, well done. Okay, let's have a look at our next law. And this one I call a power of a power, or as you might say, a power of a power. And if you've got a power and then another power, you can multiply the powers together. Or if you've got a power and another power, you can times the powers together. So if we had m cubed squared, that means we're doing m cubed multiplied by itself. So we'd have m cubed multiplied by m cubed. So it'd be m times m times m times m times m times m, and that'll be m to the power of 6. And a shortcut would be 3 times 2 is 6. So if you've got a power of a power, you can times the powers together. So here's three questions for you to try, so press pause and work out these missing powers. Okay, our first one, we've got y to the power of 6 squared, so we've got a power of a power, so we can times the powers together, 6 times 2 is 12, so it'll be y to the power of 12. And again, you could check that, well, squaring something means multiplying multiply something by itself, so you'd y to the power of 6 times y to the power of 6, you can add those two 6s and that would give you 12 as well. Okay, next one, 7 cubed to the power of 8, well we're going to multiply the powers together, 3 times 8 is 24, so that'll be 7 to the power of 24. And finally, we've got y to the power of negative 3 squared, so we're going to times the powers together. Negative 3 times 2 would be negative 6, so it would be y to the power of negative 6. So if you got y to the power of 12, 7 to the power of 24, and y to the power of negative 6, well done. 
Okay, so we've had a look at the laws of indices, and they are that if you're multiplying things with the same base, you can add the powers, that if you're dividing things with the same base, you can subtract the powers, and if you've got a power of a power, or a power of a power, you can times the powers together, and then that would give you your answer. So there are the laws of indices. And these laws of indices are very important because not only are they useful in laws of indices questions, so when you're given a question like this, but you might be multiplying algebraic terms, you might be dividing algebraic terms, you might be dealing with product of primes or even standard form, and so knowing your laws of indices be really useful. Okay, let's have a look at some questions now. Okay, let's have a look at our first question. So our first question is to simplify m to the power of 5 multiplied by m cubed all over m squared. So pause the video now and simplify this. Okay, so if I simplify this, the first thing I would do is work out my numerator. I've got m to the power of 5 multiplied by m to the power of 3. Well, we've got the same basis, so we're going to add the power, so that'll be m to the power of 8. And that's still divided by m squared. So we've got m to the power of 8 divided by m squared. We're now dividing. We've got the same base. We're going to take away the powers. So that'll be m to the power of 6. So if we were asked to simplify m to the power of 5 multiplied by m cubed over m squared, the answer would be m to the power of 6. And if you got that, well done. Okay, let's have a look at our next question. So can you simplify m to the power of 4 multiplied by m cubed to the power of 5? So press pause and simplify this. Okay, so if I was in a question like this, the first thing I would deal with is the power of the power or the power of a power. So I'm going to multiply the two powers together here. So we've got m to the power of 4, and then we've got multiplied by m, and then we had m to the power of 3 to the power of 5. We're going to multiply these powers together. 3 times 5 is 15. So we've got m to the power of 4 multiplied by m to the power of 15. We can now add the powers because we're multiplying things with the same base. So m to the power of 4 multiplied by m to the power of 15 will be m to the power of 19. And that's it. And if you got that, well done. Okay, let's have a look at our next question. So our next question says, simplify 6x to the power of 7y cubed to multiply by 5x squared y. So feel free to press pause and try this question out yourself. So if I was doing this question, the first thing I would do is I would look at the numbers at the front, the 6 and the 5, and I'd multiply those together. 6 times 5 is 30. Now I deal with my x's. I've got x to the power of 7 multiplied by x to the power of 2. We're going to add the powers there. So it's going to be x to the power of 9. 9 times of our y's, we've got y cubed multiplied by y. So it's going to be y times y times y times y. So it'd be y to the power of 4. And you could, if you wanted to, put a 1 as the power there. And you could add the powers y to the power of 3 multiplied by y to the power of 1 will be y to the power of 4. Or just know that if you're doing y cubed and you're times by another y, you're going to then have y to the power of 4. And that's it. So if you were asked to simplify 6x to the power of 7 y cubed multiplied by 5x squared y, the answer would be 30 x to the power of 9 y to the power of 4. And if you got that, well done. Okay, let's have a look at our next one. So we're going to look at a question now with a division. So we've got 10m to the power of 5n to the power of 4 divided by 2m squared n. So again, feel free to pause the video now and try this question yourself. Okay, so if I was doing this, the first thing I would do is look at the numbers at the front. We've got 10 divided by 2, that's equal to 5. Then we've got m to the power of 5 divided by m squared. So let's take away the powers. So 5 take away 2 is 3, so that'll be m cubed. And then finally, we've got n to the power of 4 divided by n. That's n to the power of 1. We can take away the powers. That'll be n to the power of 3. So the answer would be 5, m cubed, n cubed. And that's it. And if you got that, well done. Okay, let's have a look at our last question. Our last question says to simplify 3m to the power of 5 cubed. So feel free to press pause and try this question now yourself. Okay, so if I was doing this question, the first thing I would do is, well, we've got our 3 here, and that's cubed, and 3 cubed is 27, because 3 times 3 is 9, times 3 is 27. So 3 cubed is 27, so 3 cubed is 27. And then we've got m, and then to find the power, we need to just multiply the powers together, because we've got a power of a power. So 5 times 3 is 15. So the answer would be 27m to the power of 15. And that's it. So in terms of your laws of indices, it's really important to know that if you're multiplying things with the same base, you can add the powers. If you're dividing things with the same base, you can take away the powers. And if you've got a power of a power, you can multiply the powers together. And that's it. And that's it. So in today's video, we're focused on the laws of indices. So remember, if we've got the same base and we're multiplying, we add the powers. If we've got the same base and we're dividing, we subtract the powers. And then if we've got a power of a power, we multiply the two powers together. So there are the laws of indices. I really hope you find this video useful. It's an important fact to remember, so make sure that you jot that down or use the revision card to help you remember that information. And also I'd recommend that you try the practice questions. So if you go to the description below, there's the practice questions there on laws of indices. So again, I really hope you find this video useful. It's 68 days until your GCSE maths exam. So keep going, keep up the hard work, and I believe in you, you're going to do phenomenally well. Cheers. Bye.